Hello everyone, welcome to this course of Applied Optics. Today we are going to hold the last lecture of this course and uh, this is uh, of course 60th lecture of this course. Today I will not uh, cover uh, something which is given in the syllabus, rather I will talk about a few little things in which I found a student usually get confused. And uh, in this row, let us uh, start with the expression of electric field. Usually, we write field like this A is equal to E naught and some uh, vector say A cap and then E to the power i omega t minus k z. Here in on the left hand side, it is a vector quantity and therefore, the right hand side must also be a vector. Okay. To make a right hand side a vector quantity, we have introduced A cap which is nothing but a unit vector. E naught is amplitude of the field. Okay. As you can see from this exponential part, the direction of propagation of the wave is along z axis. Okay. The wave is propagating along z direction and this is the direction of propagation. Now, A cap which is a unit vector, it represents the polarization. Okay. It represents the direction in which electric field is oscillating. Okay. Therefore, the vector quantity which is associated with the amplitude or which is multiplied with the amplitude is associated with the polarization. Okay. It tells about polarization. Okay. Say the same field is written like this A is equal to E naught and then x cap e to the power i omega t minus k z. Now, in this case, we will say that this field is x polarized okay. and since the field is x polarized, we can say that it is a linearly polarized wave, yeah? it is a linearly polarized wave. Okay. Do remember that polarization is always associated with the vector which appears here. Okay, and direction of propagation appears here. Now, again assume that we have a field which is polarized along certain direction and it is given by E and K dot R. Okay, here the two K and R they both are vector. Now, K is not pointing along R. Okay, now, the projection of K uh, along the direction of r decides this value k dot r. Okay? And these are the things which one must keep in his mind and uh, usually people get confused like whenever I give this expression in the class, then students say that uh, the polarization is along z. But do remember this is direction of propagation, polarization always appear with the amplitude here. Okay? The next thing which I would like to add is that say the field is given like this E is equal to E naught say E naught is a vector I observe the unit vector in the amplitude E naught and then we have E to the power i omega t minus k z. It is a z propagating wave, wave which is very much obvious you can say that it is a wave which is propagating in plus z direction. Okay. This represents the direction of propagation, okay. but what will be the direction of propagation of this wave? E is equal to E naught e to the power minus i omega t minus k z. Now, in this case, do remember that as the wave propagate, time always evolve in the positive direction. You cannot go behind in time. Okay? Therefore, time is evolving in positive direction. Okay? Time is always increasing. Okay? 
and therefore, to make this quantity constant, say it is a plane wave, to make this quantity constant, z also must evolve positively, okay. And therefore, this wave is also propagating in plus z direction. Direction of propagation is again here in plus z, okay. Then irrespective of sign before this iota, the wave always propagate in positive z direction. The sign before iota does not change anything, okay. It is a convention like depending upon the convention, we sometimes pick plus i and sometimes minus i, okay. But the output which we receive out of this uh, complex representation, it does not change. Now, let us case assume the case where e is equal to e naught e to the power i omega t plus k z. Now, here t is evolving in positive direction, okay, this is increasing okay, and to compensate this increase, now z must decrease. In this particular case, z must be negative and this particular wave goes in minus z direction, okay. Now, again if we irrespective whether we put plus i or, or minus i, the direction of propagation here does not change, it always propagate here in minus z direction, it is a propagation direction. Now, let us talk about the definition of a plane wave. As I said in, in the classes, a plane wave is defined as a wave in which the locus of points which are oscillating in the same phase is a plane and therefore, while representing plane wave, we draw these planes which propagate in this direction, say it is a z direction, okay. Now, assume that this is a plane wave omega t minus k z. Okay, now, let us pick a time where t is equal to 0 and therefore, this expression reduces to its power minus i k z. Now, in plane wave, this phase part must be constant, okay. k z must be constant and k is a constant term, we already know, therefore, from here we can write z is equal to constant and this represents a plane and therefore, this is an expression of a plane wave. Now, if you pick another expression, a more generalized form is this omega t minus k dot r. In this case too, k dot r must be constant, okay. Now, say this is a plane. and this is k and say this is your r 1, this is your r 2, this is your r 3. Then the projection of different r's along k direction would be constant. This number because see we will always get a same length the k dot r vector would be constant here, okay. If we choose a plane here and pick different points on the plane and then draw line joining from some point on uh, this uh, horizontal line and then if we take different r's from uh, this point say O and then take the dot product of these vectors with respect to k, then k dot r gives constant. It means k dot r is equal to constant is true only if all these points lie on a plane and this is why again this equation of a plane wave, okay. Now, the next thing which I would like to add here is that the k is nothing but it is a k naught 
which is the wave vector in vacuum into an refractive index and some vector quantity. Let us remove the vector for a while, let us talk in terms of the amplitudes only, then k is equal to k naught into n, where n is nothing but refractive index of the medium. Okay? And we know k is equal to 2 pi by lambda and k naught is equal to 2 pi by lambda naught, where lambda naught is the wavelength of light in vacuum and lambda is wavelength of light in medium and n is refractive index of the medium. Therefore, from here we can write 2 pi by lambda is equal to 2 pi by lambda naught into n and from here we get the expression of n as lambda naught by lambda. Okay? And we also know that refractive index is conventionally defined by C y v, where v is velocity of light in medium and v is usually known as phase velocity. Okay? But n is not always a real number in media like metal, n assumes complex uh, value. Okay? When n is complex, then we can write n as n real and then plus minus iota n imaginary. Okay? Now, the plus minus which is appearing here, it the exact sign whether it would be plus or minus, it depends upon the sign before the iota in the exponent yeah, in this expression where e is equal to e naught e to the power plus minus i omega t minus k z. Now, whether here before iota whether it is plus or minus it decides the value of plus and minus between uh, real and imaginary part of refractive index. Okay. Now, coming back to the original definition of refractive index from here we know that n is all uh, n will always be real because c is the speed of light in vacuum and v is the speed of light in medium and they both are real numbers and therefore this definition cannot give complex n because we cannot be complex a better definition of refractive index n from electromagnetic magnetic theory is uh, derived as n is equal to epsilon r mu r where epsilon r is permittivity or more specifically relative permittivity. Relative permittivity of the medium and mu r is relative permeability. Usually, most of the optical materials are non magnetic in nature, and therefore, mu r in those cases are taken to be unity. And therefore, in most of the optical material, this would be the definition of refractive index provided they are non magnetic. Okay? We have already talked about permittivity and permeability. Permittivity represents uh, extent to which a material can be polarized in presence of an external e electric field and similarly permeability uh, gives us an extent to which a material can be magnetized in an externally applied magnetic field. Yeah? If with permittivity electric fields comes here, it is related with the electric uh, field and permeability is related to the magnetic nature, magnetic field. Okay? Now, here epsilon r and mu r they both can assume complex values. Okay? Now, if we stick with this definition and if epsilon r is complex r negative, then we get complex value of refractive index. Okay? and which satisfies like most of the requirement. But 
in few materials refractive index becomes direction dependent. The example of these materials are quartz crystal, uh, tourmaline crystal, these are birefringen material, they are anisotropic and in anisotropic crystal, crystal refractive index become direction dependent and in those particular cases we treat refractive index as a tensor or we treat permittivity and permeability as tensor quantities and in the, those material these qu uh, quantities are represented by matrices. Yeah. Now, if we assume n is equal to n r plus i n i where n r is real part of refractive index and n i is imaginary part of refractive index and this small i represents iota yeah, where iota is nothing but a square root of minus 1. Let us substitute this in this expression of field e is equal to e naught e to the power i omega t minus k into z. Let us substitute it into this expression expression of field. Now, this field can be represented as k naught n into z, which can again be expressed as e to the power i omega t minus k naught n can be written as n real plus iota n i into z. Let us expand it further e to the power i omega t minus k naught n r and apart from this we will get k naught n i into z and minus will go here, but iota into iota will make minus plus this is what we get okay, with this expression of refractive index. But in a state if we put n is equal to n r minus i n i then this gives us the expression of the field as e is equal to e naught e to the power i omega t minus k naught n r and since there are is minus sign here this minus minus will it will give one more minus here and i into z. Now, the, there are two expressions which are of uh, prime importance to us. These are the two expressions which must be given extra attention. Let us say that it is equation number 1 and this is equation number 2. Now, this is the usual amplitude part with the polarization information. The second term is common in both the expression e to the power i omega t minus k naught n r. This is the phase part and in this phase part k naught is 2 pi by lambda naught. Okay, n r is the real part of refractive index. It's this phase is similar to the initial phase. Now, when imaginary part of refractive index is taken into account, then we get this term, this extra term. Okay, and this term in equation number one is exponentially increasing term, while the the same term in equation number two is exponentially decreasing term. It's like exponentially de decaying. It's exponentially decreasing. Okay. Now, it means depending upon the sign before imaginary part of refractive index, we get exponentially increasing or exponentially decreasing term in the expression of the field. Now, if you plot equation number 1, then what you will get is that E is uh, plotted here on the vertical axis and z is here on the horizontal axis. Then you will see that there is a phase term and since we are plotting mod the phase term will go away. Okay, let us pl plot intensity in a state mod square. Now, this is exponentially increasing term it means with z the field will increase. Okay, this would be the nature of the plot exponentially increasing field. 
while if you plot 2 equation number 2 keeping z on the horizontal axis and mod of e square on the vertical axis, then you will get a exponentially decaying plot and this exponential decay ap appears from this second this th term exponentially decaying term. It means that the oscillatory nature of the field owes its origin in real part of refractive index, while the imaginary part of refractive index decides whether field will increase or decrease with propagation. Okay. Now, in most of the material, we get decrease in the field magnitude with propagation. Why? Because materials are lossy and therefore, we associate losses with imaginary part of refractive index. Okay. But here in equation 1, we saw that the, the field magnitude or the, or the uh, magnitude uh, the in, in or the intensity of the field is increasing with propagation and this is uh, again due to the imaginary part of refractive index. But here we have plus sign before imaginary part of refractive index. Contrary to the case in equation number 2, where we have minus sign before the imaginary part of refractive index. Okay. Now, where we have plus sign of refractive index, we will get increase in intensity and therefore, this term is re responsible for gain. Okay. The similar kind of gain which we witnessed in case of gain medium of a laser. In laser 2, we saw gain. Okay, and this is imaginary part govern these things whether the material would uh, contribute loss or gain. Okay. The mathematically the sign before imaginary part decides this. Okay. Further control also comes from the sign before iota term in this exponential. Okay. If you put instead of plus a minus sign, then the sign of gain and loss term would be exchanged. Okay, you can do it as your exercise, put replace i with minus i here in the expression of field and then do all the calculation, then you will realize that this expression of refractive index gives loss while this expression of refractive index gives gain. Okay. Therefore, the imaginary part of refractive index hold as uh, much of importance as the real part of imaginary, uh, real part of refractive index. Okay, moving to the next point, we know that the refraction is majorly defined using Snell's law, which says that sine of angle of incidence and sine of angle of refraction, this ratio is equal to n2 by n1. n2 is the refractive index of medium 2 and n1 is refractive index of medium 1. Okay, and this is our Snell's law. This can also be written as n1 sin theta i is equal to n2 sin theta r, where theta is this angle and theta r is this angle. Now, if we have a multilayer system, then the same expression can be generalized as n1 sin theta 1 is equal to n2 sin theta 2 is equal to dash 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 n i sin theta i okay. or more generally we can write it as k 1 sin theta 1 is equal to k 2 sin theta 2 is equal to dash 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 k i sin theta i. This is the most generalized form of Snell's law which states that tangential component of the wave vector at interfaces must be continuous. Now, whenever we talk about refraction, we say that due to the change in refractive index, the phase velocity of the wave changes and therefore, we see a deviation uh, of uh, the deviation in the path of light propagation or ray propagation. 
and due to the change in refractive index the wavelength changes here the wavelength would be lambda 1 here in a state it would be lambda 2 here it would be lambda i the wavelength is changing if we change the medium okay but the frequency of the wave it remains constant it does not depend upon the the refractive index of the medium it is frequency is medium independent quantity why because the frequency is a property of source it is solely defined by source and it solely depends upon the properties of source okay and it remains constant irrespective whether the light is undergoing refraction or refraction or diffraction or interference whatever okay frequency frequency being a property of a source it remains constant it does not vary okay now last thing which i would also like to touch upon is negative refractive index and negative refraction we know that sin theta i upon sin theta r is equal to n 2 by n 1 and this is n 1 and this is n 2 and this is a ray which is falling here and it makes an angle theta i here and then after refraction it makes angle theta r but what will happen if n 1 is equal to 1 and n 2 is equal to minus 1 let us substitute it here in the Snell's law in this particular case the right hand side would be equal to minus 1 okay therefore sin theta i upon sin theta r would be minus 1 r sin theta i is equal to minus of sin theta r okay this can also be written as sin theta i is equal to sin of minus theta r the angle of incidence is fixed because we are launching the ray at the interface between a positive refractive index medium and a refract negative refractive index medium okay but if the second medium is of refractive index minus 1 then we see that angle of refraction changes its sign it means the refracted wave will now go in this direction this would be theta r now okay and this type of refraction is called negative refraction okay here we see negative refraction okay in negative since theta is changing its direction the k also changes its, its direction the direction of energy propagation remains the same but the direction of wave vector reverses in negative refractive index medium the group velocity which is associated with the direction of energy propagation it remains the same but the direction of phase velocity reverses okay now these were a few little things which uh, i felt that it would be interesting to you and it would be helpful in clarifying a few of your doubts this is all for today this was the last lecture of this course and i hope that you must have enjoyed this course thank you for joining me